This has been a wild year at Classical Conversations as we have launched the math map and started that in the Challenge A curriculum. And so today I want to go over five things I wish I knew before starting the math map or I want you to know before you choose to quit the math map because there's a couple of things we need to know about how to view this curriculum and how to use this curriculum that are going to make all the difference for you. And if you're like anybody in my community, you're kind of wondering right now, will this even work for my student? I'm going to be honest and tell you 10 out of the 12 students in our Challenge A class have quit using MathMap so far this first year. And if you're considering quitting the MathMap, you're probably feeling disappointed and overwhelmed right now. So I want to share with you five things that I think will be a game changer for you using the math map at home. And if we haven't met before, hi, my name's Erica Lynn, and it is my hope to help make homeschooling easy for you too. So let's jump into these five things that I think would change the playing field when it comes to the math map. Number one, you need to lower your goal. Just like everything else in a classical education, there is this broad and expansive buffet placed in front of you. And the math map is no different. It's exposing you to all the things that you could possibly know in math. But you just need to settle in your heart right now and believe this to the depths of your soul. You cannot get through as much as you would like to get through. And that has been a mutual consensus throughout our community. In fact, if you are the student who is able to do all the flashcards, discuss the cover art, look at your invention pages, study your copy charts, complete all 16 worksheets, and do that all within four hours a week, you are a unicorn. Congratulations. I am so happy for you and I love that, but I want everyone else to know that is not the regular, that is not the norm, and that's not even the goal. One of the beautiful things about Classical Conversations is that Lee is providing us with a buffet of options. When you go to a buffet, you don't eat everything on the buffet. You pick the pieces that are your favorite, the things that are most essential that you need, and what is best for you. Your plate's going to look slightly different from everyone else's plate, but we're all getting filled and we're getting what we need to fuel us for the next part of our day. And this is exactly how the math map is. There's a whole bunch of information in here. It's a wonderful thing. If you complete it all the way through, you're going to know more than you would have known following some other curriculums. However, it is not probable that everyone is going to complete this in its entirety all 16 pages every single week doing the work on their own. So we want to tailor this curriculum to fit each and every one of our students. And we're going to go over some of these tips for this today. Let me help you grab a vision here. Most parents are struggling with the fact that we don't have any proof of concept of the math map yet. Students have not followed this all the way through their curriculum into graduation, and we're uncertain of how this is going to play out. I want you to think about the math map curriculum the same way you think about essentials. Your first year in essentials, do you do all the papers and memorize all the copy charts and master every part? No, you don't. You tailor it. Maybe you write every other paper and spend more time doing those. Maybe you only memorize the bold text on the copy charts. You're not mastering everything your very first year because you're getting the exact same thing year two and year three. Year one is an exposure to all the concepts. This is the same thing in the math map. And if you're a challenge A student this year or practicing another level at home, remember this is your first tour through the math map. You are not expected to understand everything and master everything. You are expected to be exposed to everything. So just let go of this idea right now of completing it all, doing all the pages, all the flashcards, all the discussions every single week, because you're going to circle back to this and cover the same concepts and the same vocab every single year. So this year in your first tour through the math map, Think of it as a gentle exposure. You don't have to master it all. I like to boil things down to the bare minimum so that I can feel good if I achieve more than that. I would say the bare minimum is to make it through the first four pages of each lesson. And I know that a lot of you are going to step back and say, I don't think that's going to work. But the truth is, 
You don't have to master every one of these lessons. You're going to have the similar lesson next year as you build on it, just like in essentials. By the time you make it through two or three years of the math map, it's just going to be easier because now you're familiar with the system. We've got to give ourselves some time to get used to this. So if the bare minimum that you do your first year through the math map is look at the cover art, work with your flashcards and make it through four pages which is technically just one day's lesson, then you are exposing yourself to all the concepts that the math map is covering the entire year. And I'd like to throw in here, I think just like in essentials, it takes us three years to master this process of learning through copying and memorization. I would like to say that the math map is the same way. And so if you are in fourth grade, it is time to start the math map. I think you should jump in this year or next year and give yourself three years, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade to start understanding how to use and be comfortable with and get familiar with the math map system before you jump into challenge. So that's a great time to jump in and make sure you're ready to be an independent math student by the time you start challenge A. The second thing I would like for everyone to know is that it is crucial you start your week right. This means your first day after community, your first lesson day, mom, dad, you need to sit down with all your students at the table and do an hour of the math map together. I believe this is crucial to setting the pace for the rest of the week. And let me tell you why. For us, that first day of the week would be Tuesday. If you can sit down on Tuesday and you can go through up to the first four pages of the math map with your student, then you have modeled all the types of problems that they're going to be facing for the rest of the week. And so when they come back Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, they can remember how they did it with you on Tuesday, and they can replicate that more easily on their own. So being there on Tuesday for an hour and working through those first four pages or as much as you can get through is going to be critical to this being successful as an independent curriculum for the rest of the week. Now, number three goes right along with this. The third thing I want you to know before quitting the math map is this math map actually works really well with multiple levels working together. And let me tell you why. All the answers are in the younger kids curriculum. So as you're working through your challenge A curriculum, the complex math map, you're trying to solve problems on your own. But if you have a younger sister or brother in the naturals curriculum, they're not solving problems. They're learning the same concepts as you, but they're learning it all as copy work. So I am telling you right now, mom and dad, if you do not have a student already doing the naturals curriculum, go to CC Connected and print this off immediately. They have a link in there, which I will link in my description with the entire year's worth of lessons. And they have four pages on one sheet. So it shrinks it down smaller. So you're not wasting as much paper with the answers. But this curriculum is all copy work. And so when you're stuck on something in the challenge A level, I can't tell you how many times you can look at the naturals curriculum and the answer is right there for your first grade sibling to copy down. And it is so helpful. So just remember this curriculum was built for all of your children to be at the table, one room schoolhouse style, and you to be able to answer the same questions. And so if you have a student in fractions and naturals and challenge A, you've got all these different different tools beyond just the copy charts. This is probably the best kept secret is to use the naturals curriculum as a little bit of a cheat sheet or another type of copy chart that gives some answers and helps you understand what and why the curriculum is looking for these answers. The fourth thing I want you to know about the math map is that this is not a curriculum based upon practice, which is how every other curriculum for math I have ever seen is. This is a curriculum exactly like Essentials, and it is based upon copying and memorizing. So you've got to think about this in new terms. We're not practicing something 100 times over and writing it out. What we are doing is we're working on memorizing it and copying it, which is why, just like in Essentials, we copy our copy charts. 
This is why in the math map, if you can't figure out the answer, it's totally acceptable and just as good to copy the answer from the answer key. Just writing down the answer is going to make the connections in our brain that's going to make it easier for us to understand in the future. And I can tell you, I remember when I got to the end of my first year of essentials and I realized I understood what the essentials copy charts meant and I hadn't done any work to figure it out. All I had done was copy the charts every day with my students and simply through the act of copying it, my body and my brain was able to absorb this information and start understanding it in conjunction with the exercises that we do, just like you have the practice pages, but copying itself is a method of learning. If you are nervous that copying is not going to effectively teach your student and that there's not enough practice and repetition, I want you to ask yourself the question. Did the essentials curriculum teach my student what they needed to know about grammar? If it did, you can transfer the trust you have in essentials to the math map, and you can use that to build your confidence as you are beginning this program. It's going to work the exact same way, which is another reason I want to repeat my advice earlier that if your student is in fourth grade, you need to get them started on the math map. Because just like Essentials takes up to three years to master, I really believe the math map method is going to take our students two to three years to get comfortable with and to master. And if you want them to be hands off and independent math map learners by the time they get into challenge A, you've got to teach them how to use the tools starting in fourth grade and fifth grade and sixth grade. The second portion of this after copying is memorization. And what I wanna say here is, Don't skip the memory cards. At the top of your page, page one, five, nine, and 13, it has a box for did you spend 10 to 15 minutes practicing one of your memory card sets? Don't skip the memory cards. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, those are going to be learned through memorization, not through repetition of practice. So it is crucial that you do not skip those cards. You do practice 10 minutes every day. The other thing is I have fallen in love with the notation cards. They have all of the major concepts. They have things that I am trying to teach my Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 students right now. And if they had known the names for some of these notations, it would have taken a lot of fear out of the Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 curriculum by the time we got there. This is what learning the grammar is all about. It's how our bodies are designed to work. It's how our brains are designed to function. If we learn the names of these math notations, we are not going to be so fearful of math when we get to the upper math levels, which is one of the reasons why I'm really excited about the math map. And so use those notation cards, turn it into a game, go over it, and don't skip the memory time every day. That being said, there is no right way to practice the memory cards. Just pull a stack out and practice them. I don't think it is helpful to try to match particular notation cards up to the lessons. I've gone through that and tried to do it. There's too much spinning around, overlap, new terms. If you see something and you don't know what it is, go look at the notation cards and see if it's on there and that can help you. Otherwise, just grab some cards out of the pack and work on memorizing them. The fifth thing I think you need to know about the math map is spend less time on the cover art and the copy charts. Listen, these 30 pieces of artwork that come on the cover are the exact same 30 pieces of artwork that your student is going to be looking at for the next 6 to 12 years. You do not need to master the conversation on this piece of artwork. You're going to get to talk about it another 7 to 12 times. What you want to do is have a 10 minute or less, maybe five minute or less conversation about this cover art. When I'm doing the curriculum with my first grader and my third grader, and we're looking at this, I'm literally just pointing to the title. We're reading, it says open shapes. And then I'm asking them, can you point to some open shapes in here? What's defined what an open shape is and how we see it in the artwork. Maybe we'll read one of the two quotes. 
or maybe I'll read the first paragraph, but that's it. We have plenty of time in the future to dig into this. I do not want to spend more than five to 10 minutes of my hour the first day discussing the artwork. Otherwise, by the time she gets to her senior year, she's going to be so sick of the artwork. So keep those discussions short and sweet and at grade level and allow them to enjoy discovering something new about the picture every single year rather than trying to get all the goodness out of the picture your first time through the math map. And same thing goes with the copy charts. I know you want to look at this copy chart and kind of commit it to memory and really understand it all. But the truth is, there's too much information on the copy chart for you to master in one year. And that's great because these copy charts are the same copy charts for all 12 years of math. I want you to remember don't spend a ton of time trying to master these copy charts. I want you to look at the copy chart. I want you to notice something that looks familiar and maybe notice something you that's new to you and you don't know, and then move on and use them as a tool, as a resource. When you don't know how to answer the problem, go to the copy chart and look for the answer, but don't try to understand everything on it. Each year, allow that copy chart to show you something new and to discover something new on it. And that's going to take a lot of the pressure off of mastering this curriculum your first tour through it. Okay, mamas, now that we are over halfway through the year and everyone has gotten their feet wet with the math map, there's a, probably a lot of feelings going around. There's a lot of successes. There's a lot of failures. And just know that's okay. All of that is part of the journey. So these are the things that are some of the best practices, tips, and tools that we have found that are working well. Really cut yourself some slack. And if this year you say, I can't figure it all out, then just cut to the bare minimum. Do pages one through four. Do the best you can. Do your copy work. Because just seeing these pages, seeing these math concepts, and looking at them a little bit is going to make next year doing the curriculum easier to go deeper, to get more. You're going to be able to do it easier your second tour through and easier your third tour through. You don't have to master this all this year. If you've listened to all of these tips and you think you still want a little more information about the math map and you're still plugging through to the end of the year, I want you to check out this video I made. This breaks down the daily lesson and how to break down your one hour of time for the math map each day, as well as it gives you five tips for tailoring or scaling the math map, five different ways to help you work through what's going to be the best fit for your child. And please put in the comments below any other questions you have or any other tips that you have found successful for your family in your house or in your community so we can all be encouraging one another and we can get the goodness that there is in this curriculum.